Welcome guys to my Blood Corpse Necromancer Diablo 4 build. Do you guys want a Necromancer that can do this? Or even this. Then stay tuned. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. So first things first, this is still a work in progress build. I still have things to work towards, better stats on gear, higher level gear itself, way more nodes for my Paragon board and better versions of said legendary aspects that I am using. But in that regard, the aspects to build and what I'm chasing here is very efficient and perfect for what I have going on here with this build. So firstly, how this build works. I've combined blood, corpses and darkness to create an all round build meant for a player not only chasing damage but also survivability at the same time. I have used a necromancer from day one, I've been through all those struggles, I've tried out most combinations and yes I've been there and done that with bone builds, yes they are super powerful, probably the most powerful you're going to get on a necromancer as of right now. But legit everybody and their nans are creating bone necromancer builds. I wanted to create something different so that is what I have done. So this build was created alongside doing simple combos for maximum damage over time output, stacking bonuses and leaving little to no chance for the enemy. So this starts with the skills that I use and why I use said skills and in what order I use skills to create these combos. So let's begin. So the combo normally starts with Blight. I use this to pull in a group of enemies or pull a group of enemies together. And this starts off that first stage of damage stacking. I then use a Reap on that grouped up bunch of enemies to create said corpses. I then use Corpse Tendrils to furthermore gather up those targets that are further away. This will also apply debuffs to every target it touches ones like slow, vulnerable and also adds chances of critical damage with this build setup. I will then use blight again on all those grouped up enemies and we finish off this combo with that corpse explosion. Now this is a combo we can string together in a couple of seconds for maximum damage output. Once those corpse explosions take effect we again fire blight into groups or single larger targets looking to stack more damage while also using tendrils when it's cooled down. Combo 2 is kind of the same, but when levelling we do come up against much harder hitting groups of enemies. When this is the case we usually use this combo to make sure we don't get slapped while trying to string the first stages of this combo together. So we use Blight to pull those enemies together, we then use that Reap to create those corpses. We then quickly spam tendrils and then we target that grouped up stack of enemies with that blood mist which within this build will start the chain of creating corpses and those corpse explosions. We then when we come out of that blood mist we just spam the usual corpse explosions and those blights alongside that tendrils upon its cooled down. Blood mist is also a great get out of jail free card if you get overwhelmed by enemies when trying those much much higher leveled activities. Blood Wave here is my ultimate, I was using Blood Storm but I felt I was only getting 50% of its benefits due to sacrificing my golem and yes sacrificing all minions is beneficial to everything this build does. So before we look at the skill tree, firstly guys let's check out the aspects you want to look for including substitutes for those not at a stage of being able to get uniques yet as this is a build I've been working towards from about a level 25 on and off, switching back and forth between this and experimenting with those bone builds. 
So as we look, you will ponder why some are here in regards to armor pieces with stats on that ain't really beneficial to what I'm trying to achieve here. Again, this is work in progress. My RNG is pretty bad. And when it comes to getting that perfect roll gear for this and what I want, well, yeah, it really doesn't happen. So in regards to stats and what you want on your gear, anything which helps shadow damage, damage over time, crowd controlled enemies, life on kill, intelligence, dexterity, and anything which adds extra ranks into what's applied on my skill tree is perfect. I wouldn't worry too much about essence because we create more than enough with this build. So my help. The aspect here is probably the one you can swap out, but I would recommend using uh, something which will help survivability. Aspects like you heal for every close up enemy, you gain increased armor when you deal any form of damage, or even consume a corpse as a chance to create a blood orb. Yes, anything like this which helps with survivability would be a perfect swap out here. Okay, so the chest piece. Blood mist triggers corpse explosion on surrounding corpses. When blood mist detonates a corpse, its cooldown is reduced. This is vital to our second combo. But again, blood mist is also a great way to get out of situations that could lead to death. My gauntlets are the necromancer uniques of the Howl from below. These are utterly unreal and do add many, many levels to this build. Not only are these stats perfect with that corpse attack speed, but also the aspect. Instead of detonating corpse explosion, it summons a volatile skeleton that charges at a random enemy and explodes. Corpse explosions damage is increased by so and so percent. Now what these add to this is basically the ability to stand in your current spot and not worrying about where corpses are on the battlefield and just triggering them due to them basically being like homing missiles. It adds a lot including a damage buff which stacks beautifully with what else we have going on here. Now what I will say is I didn't always use these and there were other aspects you can add which will suffice until you eventually get these drop. I'd look for aspects like these, or add damage to this build, or if you need more survivability, you could go down that path too. Okay, so on to our pants, and here guys, we're using another aspect, which helps with that survivability. When hit, while well, not healthy, a magical bubble is summoned around you, which allows you to become immune for a short time. This I won't lie, I have thought about substituting. I do have a couple of other aspects which I could incorporate into this build, but for the time being, this is a great aspect which will help you more than you think. On your pants, you do want though as many ranks as you can get into those corpse explosions. On my boots, I have the Blight's Defiled Area, when spawn pulls enemies into affected area. This is an important part of how this build works and deals damage. On your boots also, you want to get those ranks into those tendrils and movement speed if possible for you. On your amulet, you want the aspect of getting critical strike chance for 6 seconds when you cast tendrils. While you do bonus damage to enemies damaged by tendrils. This again for this combo is massive. My role sucks and I'm looking for a better one, but it is vital. And I guess you are starting to see how everything here stacks up damage wise with that combo I use. Also on your amulet, if you can score ranks into corp skills, that's a bonus too. Now on your first ring, you want consuming a corpse increases the damage of your next core skill by so and so percent up to 50%. My role on this piece is perfect, this aspect is great for Blight as it's a core skill too, so this stacks with everything that's going on here. On your second ring you want the aspect of your sacrifice bonuses are increased by up to 25%, again great as we sacrifice everything. Ok so on your main hand weapon, what we have here guys is the Necro Unique of the Black River. This thing is amazing by the way and it does add a lot to this build. Corpse explosion consumes up to 4 additional corpses dealing up to 130% increased damage while also giving us a much larger explosion radius per additional corpse. This well as you can imagine paired with the unique arms just makes things even crazier damage wise all also stacking with everything else we have going on here. It also adds one rank into Fueled by Death, which gives you increased damage after consuming a corpse. Now I haven't always used this weapon, in fact I've not long got it myself. What I was using before was the Bloodless Scream Unique, which I've had from real early on 
I think from like a world tier 3. And this also gets to work too. With this, your darkness skills chills enemies up to 40% with a lucky hit. Your darkness skill have up to a 100% chance to generate essence against yours and targets. Although this is a great weapon for this build or how I previously used to use it, it falls massively in comparison to what I now know you can add within this slot in exchange for this weapon. But the Black River here is your end game goal. In my offhand slot, I'm using the aspect of you deal so and so of increased damage for 6 seconds after the Shadow Blight key passive damages enemies 10 times. My role's bad, but I'm chasing better. Now, the tick damage from the Blight, and because of the way I've got it set up to pull enemies in, literally can take effect almost immediately. And it's why when I use my combo for this build, it's important to fire those Blights too. Although I am hearing shadow damage may be bugged at the moment, something Blizzard are looking into, or they could have fixed it already, I'm not too sure. Now in regards to gems, I do switch these in and out depending on the activity I'm doing, but mainly guys, I will use the ruby gems, which gives me, on my armor pieces anyway, maximum life, or maybe even the schools where I get uh, armor and healing over time. On my weapon, I 9 times out of 10 go with the sapphires which give me critical strike damage to crowd controlled enemies which is perfect here but hey if you do decide to use this build you can experiment with these and again depending on the actual activity you are doing you may switch some of these in and out so those are what i use armor weapon and aspect wise yeah for sure you can add more damage but at the risk of survivability but it is something i plan on trying out myself now the book of the dead everything here is sacrificed Skeletal Warriors, we sacrifice Reapers for that increased shadow damage. Bone Mages are sacrificed for that overpowered damage. And the Iron Golem is sacrificed for increased critical strike damage. So let's move on to our skill tree. Starting at the top, firstly we use Reap. With only one point spent here, due to only really using this for the Acolyte's Reap passive, which creates corpses upon hitting enemies. Moving down, we use Blight here with 5 ranks into this. We then go on to use the Supernatural Blight where we deal 15% more damage to enemies affected here. We also put 2 into Unliving Energy and 3 into Imperfectly Balanced for more damage output on our Blight. We then apply 3 points to Hued Flesh. This means that any damage we do, no matter the source, has a 12% chance to create a corpse. With everything we are doing here in regards to corpse explosions, blight, the health from below arms, we create many corpses absolutely everywhere on the battlefield. And this really helps the Black River in consuming more to create more. Coming down, we put one point into Blood Mist because although this can be better, we use it mainly for Ghastly Blood Mist, which creates more corpses, while we also here have Blood Mist for escape purposes, as like I said. It's also great in starting off the combo we want to use against much harder, higher leveled enemies. We then use Corpse Explosion. Obviously, I have 11 ranks into this with my gear, but put as many as you can into this, guys. We also use that Blighty Corpse Explosion, where it becomes a darkness skill dealing massive damage over time. This is perfect for us here and what we are doing. We then put points into Grim Harvest. This gives us essence upon consuming a corpse. So yes, a love essence for those blights and tendrils to work off. And we also put three points into Fueled by Death, with one point here uh, coming from the Black River weapon. You deal 12% increased damage for six seconds after consuming a corpse. Very nice indeed. We then put 3 points into Death's Embrace, this means we deal more damage to close range enemies and also taking less damage from them, very handy. We then guys only actually put 1 point into Corpse Tendrils, the rest here comes from my gear. For sure it would make sense putting more here, but in reality it isn't really necessary, we only use this to slow and pull enemies together and to get that massive damage buff from the aspects that we use on our amulets. We also go on to use Play Corpse Tendrils. This adds that vulnerable status to enemies hit by this, which is massive for us. We then use the Necrotic Corpse, 3 points here, when a corpse is formed from your skills or minions, 45 for 6% of base life. This I won't lie, I thought about adding these points into Tendrils, but I need to uh, do a little more testing under this. 
We then add one point into Reaper's Pursuit, which gives us enough movement speed when we damage enemies with our darkness skills. Three points into Gloom, which allows us to deal even more uh, darkness damage. Three points into Terror. Darkness skills deal more damage to enemy slowed, stunned or immobilized. Works great with Tendrils and our next perk. Uh, and this is the Crippling Darkness. We add one point here. Darkness skills have a 15% chance to stun enemies. So we add one point into standalone, but only to gain access to Momentum Mori, which we spend three points here. This gives us 60% sacrifice bonuses, which is amazing. Ultimate though, I'm not gonna lie, I'm still deciding. At the moment we're using Blood Wave, which I really don't incorporate that often. I may give Army of the Dead a try and leave out that third passive here and spend the point elsewhere, but I'm not sure yet. Lastly here though guys we use Shadow Blight, a game massive for this build and the damage output we do as Corpse Explosion the way it's set up here deals shadow damage. Although I do think like I said earlier it may be bugged. Okay so on to the Paragon board. So I started and made my way up left to get that Prime Rare Node active. Up to my Glyph socket here where I've used the Territorial Glyph which gives you more damage to close range enemies. Also using both Knowledge and Preservation. My first attachment board was a Flesh Eater board, making my way straight to that Legendary node, then making my way up and around to that Stiff One node, then to the left towards another attachment board where I used a Wither board, which works with that Shadow Damage. Here I made my way firstly to that Wither Legendary node, and then towards the Lingering Shadows Ray node. Now back to that Flesh Eater board, from this point here guys, I went to this Glyph slot where I'm using Control which I'm yet to level up to a 15 to get things and this thing's bonuses working here uh, with intelligence, which I will have to suck it around it. And then guys onwards right to a new board attachment where here I've used Scent of Death, which I'm basically just starting with. But it is early days, things may change. I still have many, many Paragon points to achieve. But here we have it guys. That's my Blood Corpse build for the Necromancer. Now things can and will improve over time and if you guys are interested I'll keep you updated with future videos. Now if you have any ideas on how to make this better I am really open for advice. Go ahead and send me a message either on Twitter or Discord, both are linked down below. But hey if you guys decide to follow this build I really hope it helps you out like it has done me. On that note, the end of the video has arrived. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one.